Hi all, I'm Amber. This has been the first week of September, and therefore we are doing a weekly roundup. Most of the books I've read have been library books, so none of them will be able to be shown here because I returned them yesterday. I DNF'd three books, two of them I didn't actually really read, and one of them I tried. First, let's talk about the two books that I tried to read yesterday from my TBR. The first is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I quickly realized as I was reading the first chapter that I had no interest in this book or any of her books anymore. I really don't like her writing. I struggle with her stories and comprehending any kind of sarcasm or anything like that, any kind of humor. I saw it in Pride and Prejudice, but not in any of her other books. And it's very hard to see. I'm just not attuned to sarcasm, I guess. The next one I tried to read right after I tried that one was The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury. This is a short story collection. All these stories are written on a man's back, or rather illustrated on a man's body through tattoos, and you're seeing what the stories are. The first two stories were interesting but disturbing and then the third story hit and I was just like why didn't anybody warn me that Ray Bradbury is a racist because it really seemed like he was handing out racist propaganda through this story in some way and I'm not even sure if I'm correct about this so don't take me at my word. All I know is that it felt like he was saying something very racist through this story, and I put it down after that because I just, I'm not really sure what to think of, of it anymore, or of Ray Bradbury himself because of that, and I don't even know if I can trust myself in the idea that he could be possibly racist. I tried to figure, find out if anybody has seen something similar as I did to this or any of his other works. Are things that he said himself. I can't find anything, so maybe I'm wrong, and I'm hoping that I am wrong. I don't think I could have any respect for him if I found out that he was racist, and I don't think I'd read any of his other stuff if I if I am right. So, if you know anything about this, and you can prove me one way or the other. I would like to know because I'm confused and I'm not really sure where I am with this. First, just going to jump into this with the book that I am currently reading, and that is Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison. This is about Ruth Ann, who is known as Bone, whose mother has married again, and he turns very abusive towards Bone. When I started to read this book and I was halfway through, I decided to go look at some reviews because that's what I do when I fall in love with books. I go and see what other people are thinking about it. And I found this review and the reason why she didn't like it was because it was too hairy and too grim. And I get that this book is exactly bad. She said, that's it, I don't know if I can recommend this novel because it was so grim. And I'm like, that's exactly why I would recommend it, even if I didn't like the book itself or something about it didn't hold up for me. I probably would recommend it just because of the fact that it is grim. It tells a true, it's an honest, blunt story of something that happens to so many children. She doesn't seem to understand how important that this book is because it brings to light the issues of abuse, sexual and physical, and it's un it shows the psychological effects of that abuse on the child. Um. That being said, I can understand how hard it is to digest a story like that, but to basically say I hate this book because of how grim it is. I'm not really sure I can understand that because it's the fact that it is so grim and so hearing that brings what is being said 
out in the open and makes the point clear. So, moving on. Moving on. This story is written in such a beautiful way, yet it brings out that honest and brutal and harrowing part of the story so much more. I absolutely am blown away by this book and the way she's telling it with her beautiful writing, the story itself, the characters, and just thinking about it and the fact that it's semi-autobiographical just really makes it even more powerful and even more hard to read. But it's so important. It's so very important. And I am already giving it five stars. I will be finished with this tomorrow. Now on to the books that I finished this week. The first is Water for Elephants by Sarah Boone, a library book. This is about Jacob Jankowski who is finishing up college to become a veterinary. When he finds out that his parents have died, he turns home, finds out some things that makes him go off and become a veterinarian for a traveling circus where he meets Marlena, the wife of the charming but cruel and twisted guy who is in charge of the menagerie. And he also meets Rosie, the untrained bull elephant, and these three become forged together in friendship. And this book was not satisfied at all for me. The story and the concept itself is interesting, and if it had been ex executed better than it was, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it, the story. That being said, this book was predictable, and the prelude is what actually makes it predictable. She ruins it by giving away the ending, and even though she doesn't tell you what it came from it, information point, as the story goes on, you can easily guess what's going to happen, and it doesn't really matter that there is that little twist, it still kind of ruined that shock value moment that was supposed to be there, at least what I think was supposed to be there. I also thought that the writing was very mediocre, and I was actually expecting something a little bit more beautiful and on the magical side feel to the writing, considering that this is funny circus and just the story itself which kind of feels a little bit more on the grander side I was like seeing more of that in the writing and it was very almost amateuric in that way it was being written this is something that you feel like this is the first try in writing a story so I always say that's where it, way it came off to me at times also the one thing that interested me and bothered me at the same time was the older and younger Jacob. So this book is told in the perspective of the older Jacob and the younger Jacob, but the younger Jacob story is then told through the older Jacob, which kind of bothered me because there was really no connection between what we were seeing in the present day to what we were seeing when he was younger, and I never really understood where it connected. There was no smooth transition because of that. Also, what really, really bothered me was the fact that where I could see the older Jacob, he was three-dimensional, he felt very real to me, and I understood and was able to empathize with him, the younger Jacob didn't make any sense to me. He felt very one-dimensional. I never once was able to understand the emotions that he was supposed to feel, which felt very artificial. It just was kind of like okay, you get that, but I don't really feel that you're feeling these emotions at all. And it was just kind of weird because a lot of times I felt like he was a kid, but then there was a time where he was supposed to be an adult, and it was just all these conflicts that just didn't really make sense to me. In the end, this book was quite the disaster for me, and I only gave it two stars. The book that I read this week is Kiss I by Margaret Iwood. This is about Elaine who has returned back to her hometown, Toronto, for a retrospective of her art. And in doing so, she's haunted by her childhood memories and the childhood friend Cordelia. The one thing that I've noticed from this book and the one other book that I have read by her, The Blind Assassin, is that if it wasn't for how beautiful and how wonderful her writing is, the story itself wouldn't be as good. The fact is that with The Blind Assassin and with this is that the stories 
kind of had this level tone to it. There was never that moment where there was this big thing that I felt that the story was supposed to have, and you're always expecting it, and when it does happen, it doesn't really feel that big anymore. Especially with Cat's Eye, that was the thing, and when that big reveal happened, I was like, I already knew this for some reason, and I do feel like that's my fault. I felt that I made the mistake in somehow finding out beforehand, and I don't remember how I did that, but somehow I did, and that was probably my fault. But the thing is that the story itself isn't all that interesting to me, but the writing and the way she created the story and the characters just blows me away. She really knows how to characterize people, to really bring out these three-dimensional people who have faults and good things about them and bad things about them, and they're just these imperfect, perfect people. And I love that about her, which is what kept me going through this book all the way. All of, like I said, the story isn't as interesting as you would think. It definitely was really intriguing because of the fact that this is all about the mental and emotional effects of what a person can go through by other people's treatments and how that can turn them into something else and struggle that they have to go through to reclaim themselves in a way. It was all very interesting to kind of see those effects on Elaine. Like I said, again, this is like the third time I said this, the story didn't hold up for me as much as it could have. In the end though, I did give this four and a half stars. The next book that I read is Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin. This is a library book and it's about how John Howard Griffin changed the color of his skin, made it darker so that he could travel through the South in 1959 as a black man to see what the treatment of black people were really was really like and if the suppositions that white people had about black people were correct. I found this book very fascinating, very moving, and what really fascinated me most was the psychological effects of his changing the color of his skin had on him, and not just that, but the effects of being treated in the way that people of that color were being treated at that time. It's very interesting, to say the least. I, this is a book that I feel is still relevant, still important, even today. I will say that I felt like there could have been a lot more said, that he could have gone into a lot more detail and more. I just wanted more from him. But at the same time, he really touched on some very important things, and that was the important thing, I think, for this book. So in the end, I did give this five stars. The last book that I tried to read this week was V for Vendetta by Alan Moore. I forget who did the art. I know it's David something. But Either way, this is a comic book. Trying to read it, I just I just couldn't. The story itself, I have no clue if I would have enjoyed the story. I liked the film, but I couldn't really get into it because of the typography, which really just kind of pissed me off. I'm like, go ahead and use any type of company you want, but make sure that the reader can be able to read that typography. I couldn't read it. The use were so weird that it made it look like a different letter at all. I had to hold the book up close to my face half the time just to try to get what was being said. And it wasn't even the size, it was just the style of the typography. Put me off of the book, off the whole thing because of that. I couldn't even give it a rating because of that. If I was going to give it a rating on the format, I would give it one star. Those are the two books that I'll be starting to work on. The book for my TBR this week will be Fly Boys, A True Story of Courage by James Bradley. Then the book from the library that I'll be trying to read is Are You My Mother? A Comic Drama by Alison Bechtel. That's it for me. Let's discuss down below about anything that I've talked about today. I'd also like to hear what you all have been reading. Thank you all so much for watching and keep smiling.